So hi there again. Um, in this video, I'm going to go over the, um, the first question in yesterday's quiz, which involved making use of the merge sort code, which um, is on the Java Tips website. This code, um, which is linked to off of the merge sort page on Haiku. And you guys should be getting familiar with this code. So, so the tap the quiz question basically said, assume you have this available, um, and that you can just call it. So, um, <clears throat> and that, that it works. So you didn't really even need to to know how virtual works to answer this question. You just needed to know how to call this code correctly. So um, what I said is you, you start with a two-dimensional array called puzzle. It's a four by four array, right? Four rows, four columns. And it has uh, integers in it and they're randomly uh, placed. At the end of the, um, this method called sort row column, the <coughs> integers need to be sorted by row Right? Um, or row column order, so across this row, then this row, then this row, then this row. Okay, and I said you have to um, use this header, this method header, sort row column, that takes in a two-dimensional array of integers called puzzle, and, uh, and you just have to fill this in. Now that's a very that's the type of format you're going to get on the AP question on the free response questions, right? It's going to present a problem. It's going to explain the problem, and it's going to say, complete this method, and it will give you the header of the method. So, um, so just you need to you know, be really familiar with that approach to, to questions. Okay, so <clears throat> so um, Right. So here's here's um, the <clears throat> you didn't have to do any of this. I just did this in writing the question just to test it and make sure that I had everything working correctly. Um, you had to write this method down here, which as you can see is pretty short and it's very there's a lot of repetition in it, right? So this this is basically the same as this, right? A few minor changes, but uh, basically all the same code. Um, so whenever you're dealing with a two-dimensional array, <clears throat> you're probably going to use nested for loops, right? One loop to move you through the rows, one loop to move you through the columns. Um, here again, those things. But let's back up and, and just step through this uh, one line at a time. So in this setup method, merge setup, right, we first declare an array of ints, right, the two pairs of brackets, right, that's a left and right bracket, they just look kind of like a rectangle because they're together, uh, called puzzle. So that's the declaration, and now we initialize it, which you can do on all online, uh, and say so it's a new integer array four by four. Okay, so those are actually, those, those are, are, it's zero through three for the rows and zero through three for the columns. And now I need to fill it, right? So I have uh, one outer loop that goes from zero to three, an inner loop that goes for the columns that go from zero to three. Um, so what this is doing is first going across the columns, right? Because that's the inner loop, that one happens. Um, <coughs> Uh, we first establish the row, and then we come into the inner loop and we move across that row through the columns, right? So just remember, the, it, it's a, by convention, it, we always put the row first and the column second, right? So <clears throat> when we get here, row will be whatever was established out here in the outer loop, so zero the first time. Column is going to move between zero and three. So the first time it's zero, zero. And in the zero, zero position, we're going to take 
use math.random, right? So here's a, another case of a class method, right? Anytime you see a capital letter here instead of a lowercase letter, it's an indication you're using the class and not an object of the class. Um, so this, the, the math class has certain static methods, right? Or sometimes called class method, methods, but you actually write static. Uh, one of which will generate a random number greater than z <clears throat> between zero and less than one, right? So I multiply times 100, and then I turn that into an integer because my arrays of integers, that's the casting, right? I cast it to an integer, and I store it at zero, one. And then the inner loop increments, and it's, sorry, zero, zero, then it increments to one, so zero, one, then zero, two, then zero, three. The inner loop finishes, you come out to the outer loop, that increments, so now it's one, zero, one, one, um, one, two, one, three, and so on until the entire thing is filled up, right? And now I just print it because, again, I was testing and wanted to make sure everything was okay. And it's the same loop structure. And, um, and just I'm printing it this time instead of putting things in to it. Uh, this, I shouldn't have to say this at this point in the year, but right, if you're, if you're putting some thing that you're putting, storing something in goes on the left side of the equal sign, not the right side. Right? This is what is being put into the thing on the left side. All right, now I just call sort row column. Right? Again, you didn't need to do any of this. I was just doing this uh, to test. And then, I, I, again, I have a nested for structure here in order to print out the, um, the sorted matrix after it's been dumped the sorted list has been dumped back into the matrix, right? And um, just a little trick here, right? If you want to print a go print a row and then go down to the ne next row, right? The, in the with the inner loop and um, a, a system dot out dot printlin, um, uh, all inside of braces so that after it prints the row, which is what this will do, then it does a, goes down to the next line with the LM. Okay, it's just a formatting thing. Okay, so here's what you had to do. You were given this, right? So in comes that list, that array of ints called puzzle. So <clears throat> since I know that the merge sort needs a, which is, uh, over here, right, here's that code. The merge sort needs a, uh, a list of comparable objects. So I have to send it a list of comparable, of type comparable, or of some type that implements comparable, um, but I'm just using comparable here. So a list of comparable objects, and it's of size 16 because there's 16 integers. Okay, so <clears throat> what do I do here? I go, here's my nested loop structure to move through the two-dimensional array. And I say list sub count, right? List is my list of comparables. And count is just a, a local variable that's used to you know, move through that list as I fill it. Um, and I could have done here count plus plus, that would have worked too. Um, and I and then puzzle row column. So into this list, it's first gonna move all the uh, all the integers in the first row, and then all the integers in the second row, and then all the integers in the third row, and so on, right? And then it'll be a list of those 16 integers. They won't be sorted. But at the end of this set of nested loops, lists of count will contain that list. Now, you may be wondering, right, what happens here? Because puzzle is ints, right? Ints are primitives. So, so how are these integers primitives being stored in an array of comparable objects, right? Because these comparable is a something that, that a class implements, um, not primitives. Well, what happens is auto boxing. Java takes care of this for you. 
what it does is it turns this integer, each of these integers, into each of these ints, right, in, in, in primitives into integer objects automatically. It's called autoboxing. The integer class is called the wrapper class, W-R-A-P-P-E-R, for the integer class. And all of the primitive classes have matching object, uh, have matching wrapper classes. So doubles have a double class and so on. Okay, so this is all done automatically for you. It's called auto boxing. It's awesome. It's really nice. You don't have to worry about it too much. Um, but, so at the end of this set of nested loops, we've got a list of uh, integer objects, which are, since integer implements the comparable interface, we're good to go. Now I just call merge sort dot merge sort pass in the list, right? And uh, it gets passed into merge sort, and merge sort does its magical stuff and sorts the sorts A and um and that's that. Now some of you, this was a question that came up repeatedly, and it's a really good question, right? So how how does this sorted list A get back to here? Right? We've passed in the list unsorted. Here it's called list, here it's called A. How do we get A back to here? Well, here's, here's what happens, right? Anytime you pass in an object or an array or an array list or anything except a primitive, what you're really giving to the thing that you're passing this to is the address of, in this case, you're giving it the address of the list, right? Where's the list located? So, so that address is the same out here as it is in here. So any changes that are made in here are really changing the thing out here too, because it's both, they're both pointing to the same address. Um, it's, they're both pointing to the same thing. So a change made one place also makes it in the other place, in effect, right? It's only one thing that's being changed. It's just two different um, uh, two different places have the address of that thing that's being changed. So you don't have to do anything. It's automatic. You make the change uh, in the method merge sort, and it's, and it's a bit accessible out of here. So after merge sort has done its magic and A is sorted, right, list is also sorted. Again, it's pointing to the same thing as A. So... Um, so now we just print it out. Oh, sorry, my bad. Now we just put it back into the two-dimensional array, right? It's exactly the same code as we, not exactly, but it's the same code structure, the nested loops, right? In this case, though, what we're doing is we're, um, this should not be integer here. Oops. That should be, that's curious. Must have been playing around. Right? We need to cast it back to ints. And, uh, and we store those ints back into the two-dimensional array of ints. Right? Uh, but this time, since we're going uh, first, working on the first row, right? the outer loop uh, is set first, and then the inner loop changes. So we go across that first row, filling them in, the second row, filling them in, third row, fourth row, right? And since list of count or list is sorted as we pull them off of list by increasing count, we, we fill up the two-dimensional array so that it's nice and sorted. Okay, so that's that. And I've sent this out to all of you, this code, so you can play with it, which I encourage you to, to do so that you're really comfortable with it. Um, this you, you almost all got, uh, which was great, so you understand recursion. This was the shrinking and growing word, right, so just the recursive call. Some of you didn't do the substring method, right? It's, it's, there are two substring methods. You want the one that has the two parameters, which is the start of the substring and the end of the substring. And in this case, we're, we're shrinking first. 
So it's the length minus 1. Again, <clears throat> this, is, uh, this is the length for objects, the length method for objects. It has the braces, right? Unlike the length method for arrays, which does not have the braces. That's just a weird Java thing. Okay, so I think that's um, I think that's all I wanted to say about this, and I hope this is helpful. And if not, please uh, ask questions. Thanks.